Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be going over the process for setting up the ESP Home add-on in Home Assistant. So I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm just sharing my experience. If you want to see my previous Home Assistant videos, I'll put a link below to my Home Assistant playlist and you can check those out there. So to give you a little overview of what ESP Home is, it's an add-on for Home Assistant that allows you to connect ESP32 and other boards to Home Assistant without doing extensive coding and such. So I have a couple of examples of ESP32 boards here. And if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase some of these, I'll put a link to them in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So the two boards I have here, I think this was branded High Let Go, but this is an ESP32 S2 Mini. There are a number of companies that sell this identical board. And then I had a viewer previously recommend the Seed Studio ESP32. So this is an ESP32 S2, and this is an ESP32 C3. Now you can do some searching online to see the exact differences. If you're doing basic sensors, they'll work mostly the same. Now this one has integrated Wi-Fi. This one has an external antenna. This one has more GPIO ports. This one has less. So these are microcontrollers. So these are essentially a little computer. So this is a little computer shrunk down on a little chip. And then it has GPIO. That stands for general purpose input output. So what you can do with that is take things like this sensor. This is a DHT22 sensor. And you can connect it up to the ESP32. And you can collect data with this and send this to Home Assistant for tracking. This one here has a CO2 sensor connected to it. This one also does uh, temperature and humidity. Now, these are two common style systems. So to get this working, we first need to flash the firmware to these. So with these two ESP32 boards, there are different procedures for doing that. So this S2 Mini has some buttons on it. One says zero, the other says reset. So you want to plug a USB cable into this and then plug this into a computer. We're going to be plugging it into the Home Assistant server and it needs to be put into a certain mode for downloading firmware to it. So to do that, once you have it plugged in, you want to hold down the zero, you want to press reset, let go of reset, and then let go of zero. That gives a lot of people a lot of trouble with these boards. They just plug it in and expect it to work, but you have to do that where you press zero, reset, zero, and that will get it into the firmware download mode. Now this Seed Studio board, you just plug in and it works. So this is an easier option. Now I tend to find that these are cheaper than this one. So you'd say, why wouldn't you just go with this for everything? And then also this has more GPIO, so that could be a factor. But I like to have a variety of boards so I can just test things. If I'm having trouble with a board like this, then I can try a board like this, maybe it'll work. Gives you more versatility. So I'm gonna set this aside, and this is the board I'm going to be using for my setup today. So let's head over to the computer and get that configured. Okay, so I'm logged into Home Assistant here. Now I have another tab open, that's for ESP Home. So this is ESPHome.io, and this has all sorts of information on setting this type of thing up. So if we go over to the side here for quick search, let's search for DHT22. So we have a result here down for the DHT temperature plus humidity sensor. We'll click on that. So this can give you some information on setting up the sensor. So there are all sorts of sensors you can connect up to an ESP and then connect through ESP Home to Home Assistant. And actually on that first page, it lists a lot of those here. So on that first page, it listed a lot on the left side. If you know what you want, you can search for the name of the sensor. Otherwise, you can search through for the type of sensor you want. So here it's going to show some YAML. We're going to need this in a little bit. Now this isn't going to be perfect for what I need. So it can help a lot of times to search the sensor you're using on Google or another search engine and find a tutorial on that specific sensor to get the YAML and the pins and everything worked out. But this tells the different options you can use with this sensor. So let's go back into Home Assistant. The first thing we want to do here is install the ESP Home add-on. So I'm going to go to settings on the left side and I'll go to add-ons. And then I'll go to add on store and I'll search for ESP. And here we have ESP home. I'll click on that. And then we want to click on install. So this will install it and this may take a few minutes. Okay, so we're installed. We have some options here. It says start on boot. I want that on. We have watchdog. I'll turn that on. We have auto update. You may or may not want to use auto update. You do have to be careful about updates breaking things. I'm going to leave it off, but you may choose to turn it on. And then we have show in sidebar. So that will show over here. It says ESP home on the left, and then we will start it. So when you're setting it up, you could have ESP Home on the left for easy access, but once you have all your devices set up, you could turn it off on the sidebar so it's not cluttering up your interface. And then if you ever need to get back into it, you just go to your settings and then add-ons, and then you can go to the interface directly from there. So if you look at the bottom of the screen, it says Open Web UI. You can also click on the left. Those go to the same place. So I'll do that now. Open Web UI, or I can go on the left, click ESP Home, same place. So we're at ESP Home, we want to add a new device. So I have the ESP32 S2 Mini. So I'll hit Add New Device at the bottom. 
It says the device needs to be connected to a computer using the USB cable, and there are numerous ways to do this. I'm only showing one method. So we'll hit continue here. We want to create a configuration, so I'm going to call this Studio Temp. I'll hit next. I want to tell it what kind of board we have. We have an S2. We'll hit install. It says, how do you want to install on your device? I want to plug into the computer running ESP Home Dashboard. So I'll click on that. It says, no serial devices found. So I'm going to plug a USB cable into my ESP32 board. It's a USB-C cable. It supports data. Now some ESP boards are going to use micro USB. Either way, you want to make sure when you're doing the initial firmware download that you're using a cable that supports data. There are some cables that are charge only cables and those will not work. They will work after you get the firmware downloaded and you're just using the ESP32 board for your sensor. So I'm going to head over to my Home Assistant server and I'm going to plug the sensor into USB. Okay, so I have my ESP32. Here is my server. I'm going to plug into the USB here. Now on the screen, we can see it's not recognizing this. And that's because with this board, I need to hold down the zero. Let's see if I can press that against the surface here. And then I'll press reset. I'll let go of reset. And then I'll unpress zero. And now you can see the board was recognized by ESP Home. So I'll click on that. And now it's going to write the firmware to the ESP32. Now, as far as it's concerned, there's nothing connected to this. It doesn't really care or know about it. It's just installing the firmware. Later on, we'll configure it for the sensor. So you could, in theory, connect a bunch of these up without connecting the sensors up and just get them ready, and then later go back and add sensors and configure them. Okay, so it finished compiling the firmware, and now it is uploading it to the ESP32. So now we need to reset this to make it work. I'm just going to unplug it from the Home Assistant server and I'll plug it in somewhere else in my house where it has access to Wi-Fi. So I'm going to close this for now and you'll see it says offline and this will switch to online here in a minute. And there it's online. So I'll go to edit. You don't have to wait for it to go to online to edit this, but I'll hit edit. And now I need to add some YAML down here. So I'll paste some YAML in. So I'm guessing most people will know what YAML is, but some people may not, but it's just code, or really a configuration is probably more accurate. So here we have sensor colon, and then we have dash platform colon DHT, and then the pin is GPIO 12. So let's head over to the sensor and take a look at that real quick. So here's the DHT 22 temperature sensor, and this has plus minus and out. So different sensors will have different pinouts, and you'll need to research online how they connect up. So I have these female to female DuPont connector cables, and those are going to this ESP32, and the plus and minus are going to 3.3 volts, if I can get that focused in here. So that's this one here, and then the white is going to ground, and then black is going to pin 12. Now for these DHT22s, they need what's called a pull-up resistor, and that is built into this module. So that's why I say you want to go online and search for things before you build, because you can get lots of tips. So in my configuration, I have that GPIO 12, then I have temperature colon, name, this is living room temperature. I want to change this to studio temperature. Unit of measure is degree Celsius. So if you don't know how to type that degree symbol, you can just go on Google and search how to do it, or you can actually just copy it somewhere and paste it in here. Then we have humidity, we'll change this here. And then we have update interval, 60 seconds. Let's change this to 15 just for the video. In actual usage, I would probably leave it at 60 or maybe 30. So I'll hit save here. And if we look at this and we look at the page on ESP Home, we have the YAML here. It's pretty similar. I used a different pin and I have that temperature and I have the units down here. Is there anything else? Yeah, so it's the pin and unit of measure I added in here. So we'll hit install. And before we said plug into the computer with the ESP Home dashboard, now we'll say do it wirelessly. So this will connect over Wi-Fi and it will update the firmware on the ESP32. Now this should happen faster than the initial firmware install. Okay, so it has successfully updated the firmware. Now it's rebooting. And if we wait a minute here, it will give a reading for the temperature and humidity. So we set this up to do it every 15 seconds. So in 15 seconds from now, it should show an update. And there we have an update. Let me cut my hand around it. Now, I've not found these sensors to be very fast with changes in temperature and humidity. We'll see if this changes. And I probably touched something here. I touched the pins, that probably didn't help. So let's exit out of here, I can hit stop or escape. Let's go down to settings. 
devices and services. So here we have discovered devices. This is a different sensor I have set up, the CO2 is, but here's the studio temp, I'll hit configure. It says, do you want to add the ESP node studio temp to home assistant? I'll say submit. We'll say the area is studio. I'll hit finish. So now let's go up to the main dashboard and this automatically populates with any sensors I add. And here it is right here, studio temp humidity, studio temp temperature. So if I click on that, after time, this will show the history of the temperature and the same thing with the humidity. But I just plugged it in. So that's setting up the ESP Home add-on in Home Assistant. So there are countless sensors that you can connect up to Home Assistant using ESP Home. Not only that, you could add switches and lights and things. It's super versatile. Now one thing I haven't mentioned is that I'm connected up to these pins here and you can buy ESP boards with or without pins. I tend to buy them without and solder on my own. Now really here I just have three wires so I could actually just solder these three wires directly to the board. So it can be helpful to have some of these boards with pins in it just for testing and then when you figure out your configuration you can get a dedicated board and sensor and just solder it together or use pins. Now there don't tend to be a lot of enclosures for these. I don't know if any you can even buy. You might be able to 3D print some. So you'll probably have to create your own enclosures. Now you could add other sensors on the board at the same time. That wouldn't be a problem. And when buying these things, you can buy a lot of these on Amazon. You can buy the ESP32 boards. You can buy the sensors. And if you're in a hurry, that's the way to get them. But if you want to get them cheaper, you can order them on AliExpress. Typically it might be two, three, four weeks to get them. So if you're not in a hurry, that's a way to save a lot of money. And oftentimes you're gonna be buying multiple sensors in the same package. Like when I bought this, I got two at the same time. The ESP32 board, I got three at the same time. But I'll put a link below to some of these boards and such so you can check those out. But the nice thing about it is this equipment tends to be very cost effective and very cheap way to do monitoring and other projects. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.